order is destroyed, confusion reigns. Today we'll explore the destruction of order and the beginning of mankind's identity crisis. Thanks for tuning in to The Bible Brief. In our last episode, we explored the God-given order of things and His right to order things because He's the creator of everything. We discussed the six days of creation, the creation of man and woman, the mandate that God gave to them, and that God rested on the seventh day. We also explored the order of authority that God gave to things in the beginning. God, then the man, then the woman, then the rest of the earth, including the animals. God, man, woman, earth. Our modern sensibilities might bristle at this ordering. The Bible says that man was an authority over the woman. But women aren't less than men. Women are equal and they've proved it. Well, the Bible wouldn't argue with you about the equality of women. The fact that both man and woman are described as being made in the image of God testifies to this fact. Men and women are equal in value in the Bible's eyes. That said, equality of value does not mean exactness of function. Think about this. Maybe you have a boss at work. Maybe you have parents and you live in their house. Just because your boss has authority over you, or your parents have authority in their house, doesn't say anything about your value. Your value exists independently of the authority structures in your life. Because just like Adam and Eve, you were made in the image of God. Remember, though, that equality of value does not mean exactness of function. Remember that when God made the woman, He made her out of the man's flesh as a helper to the man. She was equal in value, yet distinct in role. She and her husband were to exercise their dominion over the earth, and yet her husband was in an authoritative position over her. And this was part of God's good plan. God created things, and He created an order to those things. And remember that order is God, man, woman, earth. That's going to be important for the next part. This order also included purpose and a single prohibition. Remember these two points. First, the purpose. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. That's from Genesis 1, 28-29. Next is the prohibition, from Genesis 2. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For on the day you eat from it, you will certainly die. So we have God's good order, His purpose, and His prohibition. And then the plot thickens. Listen to what the Bible records. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? Interestingly enough, one of the creatures at the bottom of the authoritative order that God made asks the woman a question. Remember, her position was in authority over the creature. And the serpent deceptively starts her down the path of questioning God's prohibition. One thing to note here is that she heard this prohibition originally from her husband. When the prohibition was given, she wasn't created yet. So inherent in this story is the passing down of the command from God to man, to the woman, to the creatures. And now with this scene, we see a questioning of the prohibition starting at the bottom of the structure. A creature is questioning the woman. Back in step one of our run-through, we read through the whole interchange between the woman and the serpent as the Bible records it. The woman is deceived by the serpent through conversation, and it ends up like this. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, and delightful to look at, and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. That's from Genesis 3, verses 6 through 7. The serpent deceives the woman who eats. The man who is at the top of the authority chain in the scene, he eats too. And all of these and their actions disobey the order, the purpose, and the prohibition that God gave. The authority structure has been inverted. 
In this scene, we see the beast subduing the woman, the man following the woman, and God being disobeyed. And an identity crisis ensues. In this sin of disobedience, the man and woman have undermined their purpose. They have rejected the mandate, and they have disobeyed God's one rule. And where once peace and contentment resided, fear crept in. Later we read, The Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man replied, The woman you gave to be with me, she gave me some of the fruit from the tree, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. We've been through this before, but I want to call something else to your attention here. In all these questions, God is going down the authority chain. The man, then the woman. Now remember, with authority comes responsibility. And we see God squarely placing significant blame on Adam, who merely stood by as his wife was deceived by the serpent. Soon we see that God hands out curses to the serpent, to the woman, and to the man. In the last half of Genesis chapter 3, we see the serpent cursed over every animal. And we also see his eventual defeat by the seed of the woman as part of this curse. We discuss this at length in our 10-step run-through. Then we see the curse to the woman, that is pain and childbearing and marital conflict, where she will desire to reject the authority of her husband. Finally, we see the curse of the man, who will suffer hard and painful labor to farm the land and cause it to produce food. Instead of conquering the creatures and the earth as a united husband and wife, the humans will now suffer to obey God's mandate. The mandate to be fruitful and multiply is made difficult with the woman's pain and childbearing. The mandate to subdue the earth is made difficult with the painful labor the man will endure. And in the midst of this will be a marital power struggle, where the God-given authority of the man is always questioned. The blessing of the mandate and the harmony of marriage has now been tainted by the curse. And stack on top of that, the death penalty. While the couple felt their separation from God and their nakedness, they would suffer the death of their bodies as well. Listen to the final words of the curse to the man. You will eat bread by the sweat of your brow until you return to the ground since you were taken from it. For you are dust, and you will return to dust. The man, once made from dust, into whom God breathed the breath of life, the man's body would die and return to the dust. And soon the man Adam and the woman Eve are banished from the Garden of Eden, never to eat from the tree of life. Yet they're not without God's care for them. Before being banished, the people are given coverings for their nakedness by God. Apparently, God slayed an animal and used its skin for clothing the naked people. God is the one in the Bible who first slays an animal. Remember this, because it will be an important theme as we move forward. God himself provided a covering for Adam and Eve. So they're banished, cursed, and confused. Adam and Eve suffer the consequences of destroyed order. Children will be from painful labor, food will be from painful labor, and in the midst of this, marital conflict will be the norm. Sin caused an identity crisis in the heart of humanity. And yet, God still remains the top of the authority chain. And in the midst of curses, He still provides for Adam and Eve, and He has promised that eventually, a seed of the woman will come to set things right in the world. That's their hope. That's what they look for the seed who will set things right. Will that seed be in the next generation? You and I know the answer, but they didn't yet. Next time, we'll see life in the new disordered normal as we meet the first two children of the first couple. Will they follow God and honor His rule, or will they reject Him? Find out next time on The Bible Brief. Have you donated to the Bible Literacy Foundation? We'd love for you to partner with us so that we can expand our reach and grow. 
Your support means more people will have access to the life-changing story and message of the Bible. The easy way to donate is to click the link in the show notes to this episode. Alternatively, you can go to our website, BibleLiteracyFoundation.com and click donate. Thank you for making this show possible. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2022.